We turn back now to the deadly wildfires in Hawaii. Around 120 million people are exposed to unhealthy levels of air pollution. It is unequivocal that human activities are responsible for climate change. This is the story of our future. This is probably the biggest challenge humanity will face going forward in the coming decades. Since the 1800s, the average global temperature has increased by one degree Celsius. And that one degree is wreaking havoc. From severe storms and droughts to extreme weather, this is just a start. For those who don't know, the Earth is going through a greenhouse effect where gases like carbon dioxide and methane trap heat. And this is caused by human activity, primarily burning fossil fuels like coal and oil for energy. Tailpipe emissions from cars and trucks contribute to a large amount of air pollution and 16% of global emissions. Massive infrastructure projects require large amounts of steel and cement, which creates hundreds of thousands of tons of CO2 to manufacture. And you would think agriculture would combat global warming because of photosynthesis. But you're wrong. The amount of greenhouse gases we produce from cultivating crops and livestock outweigh the greenhouse gases plants take in 16 to 1. Livestock, like cows, produce a huge amount of methane, a gas that is 30 times more potent than CO2. Crops are grown with a large amount of industrial-made fertilizers and soil, rich with nitrous oxide, which is even worse than methane, at 300 times more effective at warming than CO2. So, what are we doing to fight this? If we did nothing, the planet could heat up to almost 4 degrees Celsius. But in 2015, 195 countries committed to the Paris Agreement which has two key points, keeping global warming below 2 degrees Celsius, ideally below 1.5 degrees in order to avoid absolute catastrophe. And developed countries should send aid to developing countries to help reduce their carbon footprint. But the most important part of the Paris Agreement is raising awareness of countries and the public to reduce their carbon footprint, even if we didn't mean to. China has identified the cause of the mysterious new virus. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. Coronavirus caused people to stay at home reducing global emissions by 4.6% since we're less cars, trucks, and planes moving. But this did not last for long, as emissions shot right back up in the following years. But more and more people started to innovate new solutions for climate change. And this doesn't include paper straws. You would need over 10,000 paper straws to offset a gallon of gasoline. But there are much better solutions. Electric vehicles are on the rise, with sales exceeding 10 million. EVs don't produce any tailpipe emissions, and even when you account for manufacturing and charging, there's still a better option. As more and more EVs appear in the market, prices will go down and the demand for charging will increase. And this works in conjunction with renewable energy. Solar panels and wind turbines are the most common forms of renewable energy and are improving each and every year. Solar panels have dramatically decreased in price by over 99% in the past 50 years and have gotten much better. A single wind turbine can power over 10,000 homes for an entire month. But this isn't the first time we solve the environmental issue. In the 80s, scientists discovered a hole in the ozone layer, a protective layer from the sun's harmful UV rays, and it was worsening every year. The culprit? Fluorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, which was used in everything from ACs to refrigeration to hairsprays. And the public was informed. Through TV shows, movies, and press conferences, they put pressure on world leaders. In 1987, the Montreal Doctrine was enacted. This was the first treaty signed by every country, a remarkable achievement in humankind. CFCs and other ozone-killing substances dramatically decreased, but we still need a greater push for climate change. 